Okay, before we take a look at the reading homework, I just wanted to highlight a few things within the reading. And that is the fact that similar figures are um, figures that have the same overall shape, but not necessarily the same size. And with similar figures, so let's underline this statement here, the ratio of each pair of corresponding sides is the same. Okay, so that means the two shortest sides in a figure are corresponding sides, the two longest are corresponding sides, and so on. And I'll explain more what that means. Now, in the box, I also, it's already highlighted, but I want to discuss, or just highlight, that congruent figures are similar figures, our scale factor is just one. And the scale factor, if you look at the picture above, it says when we double the length and width, so you double the dimensions, you're multiplying them by two. Okay, so your scale factor is what you're multiplying by. And then if you actually reduce a photo, you're going to multiply by one half, or your scale factor is one half. And we'll take a look at the difference between a similarity ratio and a scale factor on the back of the page. But first, let's just highlight the two main okay, properties of similar polygons, and that's that corresponding angles are congruent. And you can see that in your similarity statement, the order matches, so A is congruent to D, B is congruent to E, and then C is congruent to F. And corresponding sides are proportional. So the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. Now on the back, with a similarity ratio and scale factor. So the order of the similarity statement is important. So in this first bullet, we're comparing ABC to DEF. So the ratio of the sides, ratio is a comparison by division, 6 over 3 is 2 to 1. But this triangle DEF is half of triangle ABC. So if we multiply each side by 1 half, that gives us the resulting triangle DEF. So scale factor is what we multiply by, and the scale factor is 1 half. But going in the opposite direction, comparing DEF to ABC, we have um, 3 over 6, or 1 half. This is a 1 to 2 ratio. It's getting larger. Yes, this is a scale factor. It's doubled. Okay? So 2 to 1 ratio, the figure is getting smaller. 1 to 2, your polygon is getting larger. Okay? So you're doubling it or multiplying each side or dimension by one half. So question number one on the reading homework. It says circle the correct similarity statement. Well, we have an angle of 37 here, and that angle of 37 is congruent to, Q is congruent to L. So Q and L have to be in the same spot. Q is first, L is not first, it's L. Q is last, L is last, that's good. Q is first, L is first, that is good. You could also take a look at R, but we know that if two angles of a triangle are congruent to two angles of another, these third angles are congruent. So angle S is congruent to J. So S and J have to be in the same spot. S is in the middle, J is in the middle, S is in the middle, J is last. This one's out, so this is the correct statement. So K is congruent to R. Is that true? Yes, it is true. Number two. Okay, determine whether they are similar. So are corresponding sides proportional? So 45 to 30. Those are the two smaller numbers. So does 45 to 30, does that ratio equal 135 to 90? I went left to right and then left to right for the second. And both of those fractions reduce to 3 halves. So the answer is yes, with a similarity ratio, okay, of 3 to 2. So the ratio of those two sides reduces to 3 to 2. We have two heptagons. Which statement of proportionality is not true? Okay, you can pause it, take a look on your own, and then press pause again to come back. 
The statement that's not true is C. So let's take a look. So R to M, so R to M corresponds to AF, that's true. And then we're moving, we compared right to left. And then it went CD to OP. Now CD does correspond to OP, but again we're comparing right to left. So MR to AF would, oh, it should be OP to CD. in comparing right to left. So not true is C. Number four, the sides of the triangle are given. Which could represent the side of the triangle? So they need to be all multiplied by the same number so that they have the same scale factor. So that would be answer choice four because two times ten is twenty, three times ten is thirty, and four times ten is forty. They all have the same scale factor. Number five, which proportion can be used to solve for x? So pause, take a look at the question, and then unpause for the correct answer. The correct answer is D, and that is because it compares 32 to x, so this to this, and this picture would be this to this, 12 over 15. So you're comparing the same two sides in the same direction. Number six, it says the two angles, or the two triangles are similar rather. The measure of angle A is 100, so let's mark that. Angle B is 42. So subtract 180 minus uh, 100 is 80. 80, 80 minus 42 is 38. Find the measure of angle F, D, and E. The measure of angle F. Let's start there. So F, what does that correspond to? So angle F is here. It's in between the 11 and 9. Well, double 5 and a half. So let's highlight in color which sides correspond. This color here is going to correspond to the 11, as 11 is double 5 and a half. Uh, 4 and a half corresponds with a 9, as 9 is 2 times 4 and a half. And then the 3 corresponds to the 6. So 100 is in between, or is where the blue side and the pink side come together, that angle there. So blue and pink means this angle is going to be 100. So I didn't actually find F first. Pink and orange, 42. So pink and orange, 42, would be here. And then 38 for blue and orange. So the measure of angle F is 38 degrees. Angle D is 100 degrees. And E is 42 degrees. If the two triangles are similar, find the value of X and Y. Well, y is an angle, so let's start there. Corresponding angles of similar triangles are congruent. So angle R corresponds with angle C. So if I can find angle C, we know angle R. 70 and 30 is 100, so this would be 80. So therefore, angle R is also 80 degrees. Now with similar triangles, our corresponding sides are proportional. So AB, looking at the letters, corresponds to PQ. And to go from AB to PQ, we have a scale factor of 2. Okay? Or it's a 1 to 2 ratio. So this X times 2 is going to give us the 6. Okay? So 2 times X equals 6. And then X is 3. You could also set up a por proportion. 7 over 14 equals x over 6. Cross multiply, you get 42 equals 14x. Divide by 14, you get x is equal to 3. The two trapezoids are similar. Find the value of x and y. Well, x is an angle, again. We know that corresponding angles are congruent. 
So within the trapezoid, this angle here corresponds to this angle here. So if this is 70, remember two parallel lines cut by a transversal or same side interior or supplementary. So this is going to be 110. And in a trapezoid, two angles along the leg are supplementary. So this is equal to 110. X equals, when you divide by 2, 55. And then Y, um, let's do 2Y corresponds to the 15 over here. Corresponding sides are proportional. And then I'm going to do equals 8 over 12. So left to right equals left to right. Cross multiply, 8 times 15 is 120. 12 times 2Y is 24Y. Divided by 24 and y is equal to 5. Given the two quadrilaterals below that are similar, we have AD equals 7. Uh, AB is 5x minus 1. PS is 4. And PQ is 2x plus 2. Now corresponding angles are congruent, so A and P are congruent. Okay, And then D is congruent to S. And B, 1, 2, 3, is congruent to Q. So corresponding sides are proportional. So 5x minus 1 corresponds to 2x plus 2. Uh, I'm going to write the 5x minus 1 up top. Equals 7 to 4. I went left to right, left to right. Cross multiply. 7 times 2x plus 2 is 14x plus 14. 4 times 5x minus 1 is 20x minus 4. So, so I'm going to subtract 14x and get 6x. Add the 4 over 18 and we get x equal to 3. So in direct measurement, okay, we have a tree. You can draw a nice or draw a picture. So here's a tree. Shadows down here. We have a tree that casts a shadow of 36 feet. So as the rays come down from the sun, we have a right triangle that's formed. Okay. And then we have a boy that is five feet tall. The boy casts a shadow of four feet and forming a right triangle with the sun's rays coming down. Find the height of a tree. Okay. So since this, these measurements are taken at the same time, okay, we have two similar triangles that are formed. So I'm going to do height um, to height. So height to height, x to 5 equals shadow to shadow, so 36 over 4. And you get um, 4 times x, 4x. 36 times 5 is 180. You can also do another proportion. You can do height to shadow, so x to 36 equals height to shadow. 5 times 4, you can see you get the same cross products. You can divide by 4, and our x, or I'm going to say the height is equal to, because that was the x, 45 feet. And last, the aspect ratio of a rectangular television, which is the ratio of screen width to height, is 16 to 9. So let's draw TV screen. So it's 9 inches. It's a rectangle to 16 inches. The length of the diagonal on the screen is the television's screen size. Okay, so TV's size is by the diagonal. Determine and state to the nearest inch the screen size or the diagonal of this flat screen TV with a screen height of 36 inches. So if I have a TV that has 36 inches of a height, um, determine the screen size. So I need to know x. We have a rectangle, and before I can do that, we need to know this length here. Well, if the aspect ratio is 16 to 9, 
The length of a TV screen is the, the diagonal is the screen size. If I go from 9 to 36, that's a scale factor of 4. So 16 times 4 is going to give us a dimension of 64 inches. So 9 times 4 is 36, 16 times 4 is going to be 64. So to determine the diagonal of two sides of a right triangle, and I want to know the hypotenuse, we're going to use Pythagorean theorem. So the Pythagorean theorem x, okay, the hypotenuse is equal to the square of leg squared plus leg squared. So that gives us a square root of 5,392. And it says um, determinant states the nearest inch. So when I take the square root, we get 73.430239. The nearest square inch, the screen size is about 73 inches.